Hey, Business 163, here we are. Now our fourth video in our module on renting or buying. And in this video, we're gonna to continue to talk about uh, option number B, if, if you wanna put it that way. In other words, if you've made the decision, you wanna start the process of buying a home rather than renting. Uh, we've talked about some basic considerations in the last video, and here we talk about the actual process you'll go through to buy a home, just to get you familiar with how this all works. Alrighty, so you can tell here from the title slide we are looking at the home buying process. What happens when you decide you want to go out shopping for a home? Well, let's jump right into it. The primary steps of the process you'll go through. We always recommend that before you will go out shopping for a home, you get your finances in order. You figure out with a loan pre-approval exactly how much you can actually afford, that you know what the mortgage gonna, payment's gonna be, you take a deep breath and swallow how much that mortgage is gonna be every single month until you pay off that loan, and then, only then, do you actually start the process of shopping and looking for homes, at least seriously looking for homes, right? You may have already done a little driving around to kind of see what neighborhoods look like, what different cities have to offer, but it's really not until you have loan pre-approval that you really know what you can really seriously afford. So from there, you'll go out shopping for a home. And the question is, of course, right, um, how do you want to go shopping for a home? What kind of homes you're interested in? How do you feel about certain neighborhoods, those kinds of things? Let's say eventually you find a home you're very interested in and it is available for sale, it's listed, at which point, step number three, you make an offer, a written offer to the seller. The seller then will contemplate your offer and respond to you one way or the other, uh, many times will respond to you one way or another, and um, then it, hopefully you will get into a purchase agreement. You'll execute a purchase agreement with the seller. Typically, that purchase agreement will have some things that need to be checked off, some, as we call, in contingencies, things like uh, appropriate satisfactory inspections or an, a, pr a property appraisal for the sake of your loan, etc., etc. Once those are all checked off, right, then escrow, and we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. What is escrow? We'll talk about that. Um, make sure that everybody gets what they want at the same time. In other words, in order to uh, finish this transaction, the seller wants the money. The buyer wants legal ownership of the home. That's also known as title, right? The lender wants to make sure that he is appropriately protected and that he is named on the ownership of the home so that he can use it as collateral for the mortgage loan that he just granted you. Once all that takes place, then escrow closes and the title or the ownership of the property is transferred to you formally, legally with the county recorder. And then the property is yours. You get keys, you get to move in. That is generally speaking the steps of the process. All right, now just a few notes here. Loan pre-approval. You want to get your loan pre-approved. So the first step is, well, check out your credit, check out your credit score, get together all your documentation like pay stubs, tax returns, bank statements, get your down payment ready. And while you are in escrow, don't make any large purchases or financial moves until you close escrow. I cannot tell you, just on a personal level, as a guy who spent time working in the mortgage industry, how many buyers I have had make large, significant mistakes, specifically on this point. I had a uh, buyer uh, who I was processing a loan for in the middle of the loan buying process after he had already gotten his loan pre-approved. He decided he was going to change jobs. He quit his job, took another job someplace else that blows up the entire loan, right? We had to restructure the entire deal because he had done a foolish move. He could have just waited until he closed escrow and then done this big job change. He decided to do it midway through and completely messed up the whole home buying process. That, that's one really egregious example. But here's another one. This happens rather commonly, and that is folks get so excited as they get closer to closing, they end up racking up their credit cards to buy a whole bunch of brand new furniture for their new home before they close escrow that completely changes their credit profile and then everything changes with their loan because, oops, all of a sudden the applicant has what? 
well, $20,000 more debt owing because they decided to go max out their, their furniture account, right? So don't make any kinds of moves like that until after you close escrow. You have all the time in the house, right? The many next several years to buy all the furniture you want, right? Don't do it before you close escrow. Alrighty, returning to the slide then, what's next after getting pre-approved? Um, shopping for a home. Well, here's a question. Do you want to use a realtor or, or not? And if you don't use a realtor, who's going to structure your offer to the seller? Do you know how to do that on your own? Right? Um, what kind of home are you looking for? Re refer back to the previous video lecture on home buying basics, right? Um, and when you write your offer to the seller, the terms of your offer to the seller to purchase the home sends a message. Right? Not only does the price you're offering send a message, but so do the other terms of your offer. Do you have your loan already pre-approved? Is it contingent upon you? Well, if you're moving up, does it contingent upon you selling another house first? Right? There's a whole bunch of things that can make your offer more or less attractive to a seller. Right? Um, and, and in this regard, it really does oftentimes, if you're not really experienced in this, it makes a lot of sense for you to use a real estate agent for give, to give you guidance and advice how to structure your offer, how to, how to, uh, to know that you get the inside knowledge on certain neighborhoods and those kinds of things, right? Um, they, uh, at their best at least, real estate agents are trained to know this information to guide buyers in the way that makes the most sense for what they're looking for. All right, what's next? Getting into contract. Now, if the seller responds back to your offer, they may accept it as you wrote it up to begin with, or they may respond with a counter offer. One way or another, you need to get all the terms of the contract negotiated and agreed upon by both par parties. And at that point, once everything's agreed upon, then a standard form purchase agreement is typically drawn up with all of those terms explic explicitly written out along with time frames, time frames and any contingencies, as we mentioned in the previous uh, lecture, right? And so typically deals are contingent upon the property appraising at value, uh, the loan not only being pre-approved, but getting final loan approval, right? Um, and uh, it, at least in um, in normal real estate markets for home inspections to come in where they ought to come in, right? And uh, once all those contingencies are taken care of satisfactorily, then you are ready to close. Now, when we talk about closing, right, the question comes up with this word escrow. What is escrow? Well, escrow is handled by an escrow agent, and that escrow agent is many times a title company, right? In other states, sometimes it's an attorney who specializes in being what? The th impartial third party, the mediator, the referee, who has no vested interest with either the buyer or the seller. They exist primarily to make sure everybody gets what they want to get out of this transaction, according to the terms of the contract legally. And so, for instance, the escrow company, in a sense, holds on to the money in one hand and holds on to the title or the ownership in the other and then makes sure that those two things are handed to the respective parties simultaneously so everybody gets what they want all at the same time. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, in a typical escrow where a mortgage is involved, there's more than two parties involved, right? There is the buyer, there is the seller, and there is the lending company. And so what escrow is responsible for is to make sure that not only does the seller receive your down payment, but also all of the loan proceeds, which together make up the total selling price, right? And so he gets all the money he wants so he can go on and do what he wants to do. Whereas the buyer, if you're buying a house, what do we want? We want legal ownership of the property and we want the keys, right? We also want to make sure all everything's all checked off and no one else can come after us, right? And the lender wants to make sure if I'm going to pony up all this money in the mortgage pro loan proceeds, I want to make sure that my name is specifically title as lien holder, right, on the property so that I have the property as collateral for the loan if something goes bad, right? So 
what the escrow company has is this very important legal function to make sure that all the parties to a real estate transaction get what they appropriately want out of the contract. All right. So I hope that helps just a, a quick sort of roadmap through what the basic home buying, buying process looks like here in the state of California, at least. Right now, obviously, this process has far more details and nuances than just we're giving you in this brief little video. Um, we actually have here at College of Marin, of course, an entire track of programs to uh, and classes and courses to train up professional real estate agents and appraisers and so we have all those courses here right there's a lot more than just the basic overview we've given you here but at least from a personal finance perspective for those of you who will someday be uh, prospectively looking to purchase a home this should give you a broad understanding of how the process typically works so you can go in sort of with full knowledge of what to expect as you go through each of the steps all righty so i hope that's helpful Obviously, more to say on this subject and more to say in the next video about specifics about mortgage loans. Alrighty, so we will see you in that next video.